April 26th, 1991. The city of Andover had just been impacted by one of the most infamous tornadoes in history, but its parent supercell was far from being over. Reporters Greg Jarrett and Ted Lewis of KSNW of Wichita were returning to the station after covering an unrelated story earlier that day. In the path of this supercell, they watched as a tornado materialized over El Dorado Lake, south of Cassidy. The news crew decided to document the incoming tornado as it rapidly approached their vehicle. It soon became apparent to the news crew that the tornado was gaining ground on them, and outrunning it was no longer an option. Up ahead was the overpass of Northeast 130th Street, where the crew figured it would be their best chance at shelter. As their cameras rolled, they encouraged other motorists seeking refuge to climb up the embankment right where the upper road deck meets the ground. They clung to the I-beams of the upper road deck as the tornado shortly thereafter would make a glancing blow at the overpass, rolling the vehicles the motorists had all just been in. Winds whipped through the overpass, but all things considered, the group seeking shelter had survived the tornado with very minor injuries. Following that event, other instances of people sheltering under overpasses for tornadoes began to crop up. These videos hit the airwaves in the 90s, and the general public adopted the idea that overpasses could be an acceptable shelter for tornadoes. In actuality, this couldn't be further from the truth. This is a tornado emergency for more in South Oklahoma City. May 3rd, 1999. As the incredibly powerful Bridge Creek Moore F5 tornado mowed through the suburbs of Oklahoma City with measured winds exceeding 300 miles per hour, several panicked motorists took to the overpasses as this frightening tornado bared down on them. Unlike the previous instances of sheltering under overpasses, these individuals were not nearly as fortunate. Across the three overpass locations impacted by tornadoes that fateful day, three fatalities and multiple life-threatening injuries occurred including compound fractures, impalings, and even missing fingers, ears, and noses. The May 3rd event drove home the fact that overpasses are one of the most dangerous locations to shelter during a tornado. With that said, let's dive into the science behind overpasses and why they are tornado death traps. To help us visualize how tornadoes interact with overpasses, I constructed this wind tunnel to visualize the effects of wind interacting with the structure. It's built from MDF board in 1x2s and is powered by a bathroom ventilation fan. To ensure laminar flow, I cut up and glued together drinking straws to straighten out the flow through the test section. To really show the flow in the wind tunnel, I utilized the fog machine that we used for Halloween. With the acrylic viewing window potted, structure painted, and LED light mounted, it's time to 3D print a scaled down overpass that I designed in my CAD software. Before we test the structure in the wind tunnel, we had to dive into some of the background science. Part of the reason why people believed you could shelter in an overpass was due to the misconception that tornado wind profiles went mainly upward. That way, the overpass would prevent wind from going up. While tornadoes form due to strong thunderstorm updrafts, the reality of tornadic wind profiles is that they are mostly horizontal about the axis of rotation, especially at the ground level. Nowadays, given the amount of HD tornado footage available on the internet, that seems pretty obvious. Back before 1999, however, there wasn't an abundance of tornado content on the relatively early internet, so public perception of tornado anatomy varied wildly amongst the general population leading to misconceptions like these to be commonplace. Either way, this all means our small-scale wind tunnel can approximate the tangential velocity of a tornadic wind field flowing through an overpass structure. Looking closely at our model, look to where the upper road deck meets the embankment. To understand what's happening here, let's dive into some fluid dynamics and Bernoulli's principle to explore the Venturi effect. The Venturi effect is a fluid dynamics principle that states that as a fluid moves through a constricted section, its velocity must increase and its pressure must drop in order to maintain the conservation of mass. Looking at the cross section of an overpass, 
Notice how the cross-sectional area decreases the further up the embankment you go. According to the Venturi effect, this means that the velocity of the air flowing underneath the overpass will increase the further up the embankment you go. In the case of the May 3rd Bridge Creek tornado, there were unconstricted wind speeds of over 300 miles per hour. This means that people under overpasses were likely subjected to wind speeds well over 300 miles per hour, given the Venturi effect. In our small scale overpass model, we can see the Venturi effect in action right along where the upper road deck meets the ground. Now that we understand the Venturi effect and that wind speeds are greatly increased because of it, we must talk about a major component of the May 3rd event, and that's wind-driven debris. To understand why wind-driven debris is extremely dangerous in tornadoes, and especially underneath overpasses, let's look at the equation for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is a form of energy that an object has when it's in motion. To calculate an object's kinetic energy, we need to know the object's mass and its velocity. Notice that the velocity term is squared. This tells us that the real problem with wind-driven debris is not its mass, but rather its velocity. For example, let's say there's an object that has a mass of 1 kilogram, and it's moving at 67 meters per second. It has 2,244.5 joules of kinetic energy. If we double the mass to 2 kilograms, then there would be 4,489 joules of kinetic energy. However, if we double the velocity instead, that would yield a kinetic energy of 8,978 joules. As you can see, it's not the mass of an object that matters when it comes to debris in a tornado, but rather its velocity. Oftentimes after strong tornadoes, images of damage will show ordinarily harmless objects impaled into structures or trees. This is all due to the incredible amount of kinetic energy possessed by the object moving at tornadic speeds. Relating this back to overpasses, the May 3rd event took place in a heavily populated region of Oklahoma. This means that tornadoes that day were ingesting large amounts of debris. This debris ranged from small shards of glass to large chunks of structures. In the case of the Bridge Creek F5, this tornado was filled with large amounts of debris. Once it impacted the overpasses, the Venturi effect channeled the wind and accelerated the velocities of the wind therefore accelerating the debris, vastly increasing its kinetic energy. All of these factors combined led to the overpasses becoming particle accelerators, and those sheltering underneath them were completely exposed as these overpasses lacked any protection from debris. The small pieces of debris traveling at extreme velocities would effectively act like bullets, causing the gruesome injuries and fatalities for those that sheltered under overpasses. Since May 3rd, 1999, the National Weather Service and other authorities have made it clear that overpasses are not suitable shelters for a tornado. However, people still use overpasses to shelter from another byproduct of severe weather. Hail. An issue that is still taking place today is motorists using overpasses to shield their cars from large hail. As a stream of motorists reach an overpass, they take up the lanes and fill up all the available space underneath to protect their vehicles from the hail. These actions cause a traffic jam, and occasionally, the blinding precipitation drastically reduces visibility. Motorists might fail to see the traffic at a halt up ahead given the blinding heavy rain and hail before it's too late, leading to pile-up crashes. So what should you do if you find yourself on the road during a tornado warning? The first thing you should try is to find a sturdy structure that has either a basement or an interior room with no windows, like a school or a municipal building. If that isn't an option and debris starts whirling around your vehicle, the next thing you should try is to put your head below the windows of your vehicle while remaining seat belted. Do the best you can to cover your head. If you have a sweatshirt or a blanket, that's preferred because you can cover your head in the event that your windows implode. Another option you have is if it's safe to do so, get out of your vehicle and get into a low-lying ditch, lying face down and covering your head with your hands. Either of these choices are acceptable practices from sheltering yourselves from a tornado in a very sticky situation. Use your best judgment in that situation in order to take the best course of action. Overpasses do not offer the protection needed to shelter yourself from a tornado, and if anything, enhance the hazards of a tornado. And unfortunately, it took the lives of three people on May 3rd, 1999 to figure this out. Do the smart thing when a tornado warning sounds. 
get off the road, and get to a proper shelter that can save you from a tornado. Stay safe, everyone out there.